Hello and welcome back to my channel. Making fondant pumpkins and leaves are really handy skills for any of your fall baking I've planned this year. We'll start with pumpkins. I'm going to show you two different ways. The first way is a 3D pumpkin. With a ball of fondant, roll around in your hand, then take the quilting fondant tool to poke a hole at the top. And using the tool that looks like a plastic blade, I'm just indenting some lines down the sides of the ball to give it the ridges the pumpkin has. These are nice because pumpkins don't need to be uniform or perfect. There is no perfect pumpkin in real life. They all have a little bit of a different character to them. So it's fun to make some shorter pumpkins or some taller pumpkins or some more irregular pumpkins. This is my easy fondant recipe. It's made with marshmallows. You can find that on my website. When I make 3D pumpkins like this, I do need in a little bit more powdered sugar to stiffen the consistency and help them keep their shape. Next, we'll make the stem. Just roll a small tapered piece of brown fondant or whatever, whatever color you choose and it'll fit right on top of that hole you made. I don't think I showed this, but brush a tiny bit of water to help it stick. Be using this extruder tool to make the vines. You can certainly just roll out very small, long pieces of fondant, but this makes short work of that. I'll just cut some different length pieces and stick them onto the pumpkin and then swirl them around into different designs. Then again, just a little brush of water will help keep it in place. Let these dry at least overnight before using them. The first way I like to make fondant pumpkins, here's the second way. Pull some fondant out flat, then place plastic wrap over it. Using fondant covers over plastic wrap, it gives the edge a more rounded 3D look than just a flat, sharp cut. Just taking this blade tool again and giving it some ridges and some texture. And then for the stem, just like the first pumpkin style, just roll out a tapered piece of brown, kind of flatten the end, and stick it on with a little water. Add our vines again using the same technique we did with the first pumpkins, kind of swirling them around and holding them in place with some water. Depending on what your plan is for the more flat pumpkins, you can store them in an airtight container if you want them to remain flexible and press them around a cake, or you can let them dry hard and open to air. Move on to some fondant leaves. I'm marbling together a few different colors, kneading them together just until they're incorporated and not fully mixed. That way you can still see some different colors. The cutters I'm using today are from my shop at custombakingbyerin.com and I'll link them in the description, but you can use this with really any type of leaf cutter. Make a few different maple leaves, make them some oak leaves, and this may be like ash or, or aspen style leaf. The trick for making fondant leaves look more realistic is by using this impression mat. This is a silicone mat that has grooves or veins in it for flowers or leaves or feathers. Rub a little bit of Crisco or shortening on top to prevent the fondant from sticking, then I very lightly roll my rolling pin on top. Fill them off very gently and then you can see they have leaf veins. In allowing my fondant leaves to dry, I like to stick little makeup wedges under different parts of the leaf so when they dry, they're not totally flat and they look more crinkly or dried like fall leaves would. Let these dry overnight as well. And then you can see once they're dry, they all have a little bit different movement to them. Here are some design ideas for laying them out on a cake I have ready. Just piping a little bit of buttercream to the back of them to act as the glue to attach them to my cake. If you've seen me make fondant toppers before, this isn't my usual method. Usually I incorporate the toothpick into the fondant piece beforehand, but this style was kind of an afterthought of mine, so I decided to add it last minute. I also have some buttercream flowers and leaves I made as well that I'll show in another video.
You know, if you have a chance to try any of these fondant pumpkins or leaves, I'd love to hear how it goes for you and also what color scheme you chose. Thank you for watching.